We start our journey in hard mode by using our newly acquired Pawn Hammer, dropped from the Wall of Flesh to break three demon altars. The ore we get is Palladium, followed by Aura Calcum, and finally Adamantite. This is surprisingly a good turnout for a spear only build. The Adamantite armor offers better flat defense and a better spear, the Adamantite Glaive. As time progressed, the group worked on two things, gathering enough ore to get Adamantite gear and building a pylon system, essentially teleporters to specific biomes. First we gathered Palladium, enough to make a pickaxe, and immediately progressed to an ore calcum pickaxe and anvil. After mining for Adamantite, I had enough to make a glaive, boost to go damage from 34 to 49, and also serving as a bittersweet farewell to the Darklands, which has served us oh so well this pre-hard mode. After a ceremonial pyre and a viking funeral, we move onward to the finish of our adamantite armor set until in iconic terraria fashion, tragedy strikes. <laughs> the pirate invasion is a hard mode invasion event akin to the goblin invasion, but leagues more difficult. None of that matters, however, as what is really depicted is a completely disproportionate massacre. Seeing as we just got into hard mode, we are very under-equipped, our weapons are okay but not optimal, and our armor is made obsolete by cannon shots and blunderbusses. And these are just the basic enemies. Behold the Flying Dutchman, a monster of the air. Even with three players, the challenge is too much, and one by one we fall, most of our NPCs following suit. The Pirate Invasion serves us with a reality check, a reminder, we are still weak, we have just entered the state of hard mode, where things are serious. We still have a long way to go to challenge the difficult bosses that await us. After we finish mining for the sufficient ore to get armors, I get to work building. And we do a lot of building. I build a greenhouse to serve as the planting grounds for all of the alchemy components for our potions, which will be very important for us down the line. I then build a house in the mushroom bomb to put the dry out so she can sell me mushroom grass seeds. Why do we need mushroom grass seeds? For the truffle, a villager which will be exponentially helpful for us in the near future. But, while we can't unlock him yet, the means of unlocking him are our current primary goal, the mechanical bosses. Mechanical bosses are three bosses that are the hard mode versions of pre-hard mode bosses. Stick with me here. The three mechanical bosses are as follows. The Twins, the Destroyer, and Skeletron Prime. All three of them are difficult, and there really is no easy path given to the player for defeating them. So we go to the boss that is, in my opinion, the easiest to beat in multiplayer. The Twins. The twins are similar to Two Eyes of Cthulhu, but also very different to Two Eyes of Cthulhu. I won't lie, this boss is one of the smoking gun examples of the flaws of a spear, or rather, melee in general. You see, even the spear, one of the best weapons in terms of range, evidently struggles a lot against a boss like the twins, who both move with the character they're targeting, which would of course be me. I have to take a lot of damage despite not doing the best of damage to them. Between dodging spasmatism, constant beratement from his lasers, and the Sretnik's periodical charging, I'm constantly in a state of fear of taking too much damage. As soon as I get the ability to drink another potion, I'm chugging them like an irresponsible middle-aged parent who has recently come into possession of children. However, because they are so distracted by me, my teammates have free roam to dish out damage for the twins, and sooner than later, the first eye enters his second phase. I very narrowly evade his opening attack and most deadly attack, the fire spew, while my teammates dish out some critical damage. However, the tides would soon turn on me. In a depressing end, my teammates fall one after one after me, and we lose our first boss fight against the mechanics. Welcome to hard mode. From the sheer skin of his teeth, Bulky manages to stay alive on a sliver of health enough for reinforcements to arrive. I quickly scramble to the nurse to replenish my lost health and swoop into the fight to save Volky. Just like that, the fight has been saved and we quickly take down Spasmatism with our collective efforts. All that's left is to pepper the significantly weaker and less autonomous Retinic until he succeeds away in defeat. Without hesitation, I head to our special new biome, the Mushroom Biome. Inhabiting the Mushroom Kingdom is the Truffle, who sells the Mushroom Spear after one mechanical boss is defeated. While it was relatively short-lived, we bid farewell to our Adamantite Glaive and reap the benefits of damage from an increase to 49 to 60 unweighted, and also a special Mushroom Linger effect. Now, while we enjoy our upgrades in the Grasslands, a threat looms over in the Frozen Tantra. An oh-so-familiar threat. <gasps> Dear Claws! <gasps> oh my god, Dear Claws from the hit crossover hit the star! Ow! The Deer Clops is supposed to be a pre hard boss in the Tundra that provides a challenge to players before killing a wall of flesh, but we can't. We 
yeah, we're fighting him now. With our newly fashioned mushroom spear, the only appropriate thing would be to test it out. And who better to test it on than the Destroyer? The Destroyer is the second of three mechanical bosses and is a version of the Eater of Worlds, a corruption boss that we could not personally fight on the Crimson World as it was replaced by the Brain of Confusion. The Destroyer emerges from the Earth as we ready our weapons. The Mushroom Spear tears through the Destroyer's mechanical body as the Linger effect has a devastating amount of damage. As the Destroyer submerges and re-emerges, robotic drones hover over and deal damage from lasers that we unfortunately cannot answer as there is just too many and attached to us from a distance. Also, not to mention, they wreck our villagers. There was a pirate and the painter and our... It dodged, boy. Look at this damage! We're doing okay, so good. Okay, okay, 4K! Okay, okay. 2K! Bro! He got me his ass! Let's go! Got it. Nice. It costed us greatly, but we emerged victorious in our bout with the destroyer. With two of three bosses down, we turn our sights to the last ravenous robot, Skeletron Prime. This boss is, obviously, the mechanical version of Skeletron, and mimics a lot of behaviors that the original Skeletron does. His hands linger around his head, and his head will occasionally spin, but this time, we have four hands to deal with. Go oh, hop on! I'm so glad he's focusing on you, not me. Oh. Hey guys! I'm taking no damage. I like shitting on him, dude. I'm not gonna lie to you. Even with me being pretty low HP the entire fight. Thing. Okay. Dude, pop off! If I didn't pop that hope potion in time, I was so dead. <laughs> That's not fair. That was so close. I right, got one, got one, got one. Oh, one of the guns is one shot as well. Airpan's almost one shot. Airpan's dead, Airpan's dead. Get the chance I love it. Oh, one more hand, I love one more hand, hand. Kill the cripple. It's on Wendy, I think. 5k, 5k. Oh. Never mind, he's on me! 5k, 5k, 2k! Finish him off! Let's go! Let's go! We're good! We're just too good! We're Dude, just I'm too not good! Lie to you. In a destructive battle, we complete our trilogy of defeating mechanical bosses and move on to our next chapter, preparation for Plan Terra. The ore we get, hollowed bars, as well as the souls of three mechanical bosses make a pickaxe, a pickaxe axe, which we use in conjunction with the splunker and mining potions to get chlorophyte in the jungle. We need a lot of chlorophyte. Despite a very close call, we end up getting 257 chlorophyte ore on our first visit, amounting to three new pieces of new post-mechanical armor, the turtle armor. As we collect more chlorophyte, we craft a chlorophyte partisan, a new spear. I know what you're thinking, a new spear already? However, this chlorophyte spear is unique in that the damage is worse than the mushroom spear, but has a higher damage per second than the spear. This is because it emits a poisonous cloud that lingers and deals a very good amount of damage and as such, we'll be dual-wielding the spears throughout the near future. More mining for Chlorophyte, and the life fruit ensues. Just when you think our journey is getting redundant, our next boss is here to remind you how weak we still are. Duke Fishrant is a terror of the sea, and is an optimal yet incredibly beneficial boss to us because of one thing. The Fishron Wings, which tower our current wings in terms of elevation and speed, and grants further capabilities in the sea. Also, the Shrimpy Truffle, a mount that many regard as the best mount in the game when subjected to water, as it increases not just speed but also damage. As we fight him, he shoots out bursts of bubbles that immediately pop from one projectile, and the lingering chlorophyte clouds and mushrooms make quick work of those. However, the constant berating of shark nados and brushing attacks are something to be weary of. Unexpectedly, the damage is incredibly high, and the nurse is our guardian angel on multiple occasions. After dealing half of his health, he enters his second phase. The second phase raises the heat greatly, and his speed is noticeably faster, attempting now to rush us and take us at a disadvantage. This plays to our strengths, but what we do not consider is the absolute ferocity of Fishron. He attacks relentlessly and ruthlessly, and even with my rock-hard defense that mitigates the damage that would otherwise be fatal, I'm forced to teleport back home. But tragically, there's no nurse, and my health potion timer is still waning. I have no choice but to re-enter the arena, and almost immediately am dismantled. Our first loss in a while, yet still all too familiar. Still not believing that we could be so slightly inferior to the fish run, we go for round two. 
this dude's trash. Are you good? Damn. Okay, finally I got our buffs in. Sorry, now I can actually fucking participate in the fight. It's alright. Second phase. Bro, what is this fight? Bro. But tragically, there's no nurse. Kind of okay, okay for now, is what I'm saying. Okay. I just immediately died. Holy shit. I can't, bro. Any other YouTuber would understand that fish run is out of our reach and move on to a different boss. But I'm not like any other YouTuber. Me and Duncan stomach our last potion and summon the boss. Now knowing just what he's capable of at that last phase, the speed from the asphalt assists greatly in avoiding his charges, and our damage input helps minimize the duration of the fight, therefore reducing the damage we are taking. However, this big fish wasn't going down without a fight. If there ever was a nail biter finish in Terraria, it was right here. Having finally defeated our arch nemesis, we turn our sights to a different boss. A boss on the thick floor of the humid jungle. The next boss takes the form of a botanical behemoth, a flowery fiend. Without warning, the bulb juts out from the earth, latching onto anything it can with its earthy vibes. The first phase revolves around us escaping her contact damage and returning to the boss arena. However, by the time me and Darkman are back in the arena, we have already dealt a considerable amount of damage, and phase 2 is fast in pursuit. In phase 2, Plantera grows even more vines and becomes much faster, as well as doing more damage. Due to the placements of our platforms, grappling hooks are incredibly useful during this fight to create distance. Despite her speed and a few nips from her claws, we're taking minimal damage, all while leaving enough distance for the lingering poisonous clouds from the chlorophyte partisan to dish out high amounts of damage. It's not that she doesn't do any damage either, as Dargan is immediately rendered in critical condition in the second phase, so it really showcases how important high defense and good armor affects my melee build. In a brief encounter with this flowery fiend, we weed through her attacks and obtain a victory as sweet as nectar. By killing Plantera too, we actually get a lot of unlocks from this kill. Think of her as the wall of flesh of hard mode. The dungeon, once scary and now effortless, is revitalized into a newly difficult dungeon. This dungeon is packed with lots of loot that can very well be viable to the end of the game, and one of those items are high on priority in terms of things we'll be needing heading into the final leg. Of course, we are talking about the Paladin Shield, which is a staple item for our tank-inspired, Wigfred Spear-only build. And we do eventually get three Paladin Shields. Three, I hear you ask. Why would you need three shields? Why? Because we can create the two shields counterparts, the hero shield and the frozen shield. These shields offer the best armor value for the accessory slots at 8 defense apiece, 12 with the warding attribute. On top of that, it includes knockback immunity, increased aggro, 25% damage reduction when below 50% health, and a unique tanking feature that allows my teammates to redirect 25% of their damage taken to me. All in all, it's a perfect accessory for any Wakeford inspired build, on top of simply just being a good accessory. The next thing we concern ourselves with is this upgrade, specifically a spear upgrade. With no time to waste, we go to the dungeon to find ectoplasm, dropped rarely by enemies with a small chance. After we get enough ectoplasm, we head back to the anvil to combine it with souls of fright and silk to make a naughty present. The frost moon can only be summoned at night, so we go to bed, and then when we awake, we summon the ice queen. The ice queen is surprisingly threatening, with her quick and painful ice shards attacks and spin moves that deal criminally high amounts of damage. But with proper execution, and a little bit of luck, we kill the Ice Queen and obtain our rightful prize. The North Pole increases our damage from around 60 to 80, without buffs or damage upgrades, as well as a unique projectile that travels some distance and leaves smaller projectiles resembling snowflakes. The projectiles work really well when shot directly above opponents, as the snowflakes deal a constant harassing storm of damage to them. When used correctly, our damage compared to the previous spears may double or even triple. That's enough talk for accessories, let's talk about what you're really here for. Sweet, sweet progression. The progression for us lies in the dark, decrepit, ancient lizard civilization that resides in the pyramids. These reptilian Aztecs use traps to deter us, but thanks to my potion making, namely the Danger Sense potion, we can see through them. Oh my god, they go on their legs, what the fuck? Dude! Dude don't go in front of me! I am floating! That is your fault! Dude! I was about to die. How's the self-awareness? No, I see him. I see them. I just, I just like running into him to fuck with you. One right here. There's one right there. Okay. Don't stay up here. Stay up okay. here. Bounce. Balls are doing like. Why are you just eating the balls? Pause. 
<laughs> so I'll pop open this lizard chest, I get a power temple, and I get a solar eclipse thing. That's so clutch. That's what we need, boys. That's what we need. Here you go. We go! Alright, let's go. Bet. We finally found the arena. Make sure we don't step on anything. Through our dive downwards into the pyramid, we come across plenty of chests with the solar power cell, the item required for summoning Golem. And after making an incredulous boss arena suited with only a platform and a campfire, we initiate the battle. Lizard face. Alright, uh... What? That's what I'm saying. Oh, Anyways. thanks, man. What the fuck? Golem is a monstrous, ancient machination, wielding stone gauntlets, laser eyes, and a detachable head. His ancient form towers over us, and this fight was shaping up to be nothing short of a vicious, blow for blow, intense battle. Un until it wasn't. Got him, everyone. Let's go. What a surprise. He's not, not as. Not as. Chat, where's my guys? Thank you. Let's go. I got Loki's armor, spiked shiny stone. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Please give me the sunstone. Please give me the sunstone. Dumb shit. Oh! Bro, I'm standing still holding down RT. I don't think I've, I jumped once. But I, but I, I don't. I have two more if you guys want to do two more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get them. Get them. Get them. Wait, Dark, Dark, please. Right now! This was just disrespectful at this point. We didn't just kill him once, but five times. Another day, another boss down for the Don't Starve Terraria crew. <laughs> And this day in particular, we have just entered the final stretch of the game. The last requirements we shall partake in order to get to this final boss. From the golem, we turn our turtle armor into the post-golem exclusive beetle armor. Not only is it a direct improvement from the turtle armor, but it now gives the ability to summon rotary beetles around the player, which reduces incoming damage by up to 40%. With this armor, we have completed our Wigford build to the fullest, reaching as high as 150 defense when fully optimized, coupled with large damage reductions. To put it simply, we're a tank. To think about how easily we died in the past, it's such a large achievement to see our improvement all this time later. But now is not the time to sulk and think about the past. For now more than ever, we must press on to what is now the final stage of our adventure, the climax. With the armor, accessories, and weaponry being the best of the best, the cream of the crop that they are, we enter the dungeon's entrance to fight our penultimate boss. Are you ready? Okay, yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Golem to cultists are quick and frantic, as devout as they are to whatever they pray to, they are vicious and deceptive. The conniving cultist spawns dragons for every decoy broken, as well as shooting its own lightning orbs, frost spikes, and fireballs. For my two teammates, all these things were incredibly fatal, but honestly, my advanced defense really aided in my fighting ability, as I could be more upfront with my attacks. You can truly see how different our calibers are of defense are this fight. Bro, I know. Ooh, I'm low too myself. Look at this. Map, but you gotta stay near me, my G. That way I don't take damage. Keep me home. Uh, it's just hard focus. I'm hard focus. I'm yep, hard yep, focus. Yep, yep, yep. Come on. Come on. Kill him! Hey guys. Kill him. 1K. Okay. Let's go. Yo! Yes, sir. Celestial ancient, creatures ancient are in Without warning. The celestial pillars jut from the earth into the four quarters of the world, and the gods of our planet send forth their henchmen to try and hinder our advance. In our first extraterrestrial encounter, we fight the Sardis pillars, flying squid-like flow invaders, and star cells. The North Pole is shown in full display, taking out batches of enemies as the snowflakes wreak havoc on our opponents. Guys, I'm doing the, the skilled things. Yep, I can second that. As a fellow skilled melee player, I can agree with that. What am I getting hit by? I just got one shot. Okay, that 430 damage, really? I'm just dodging, honestly. I want to keep my buffs, though. I'll keep you home. Why am I- why are we getting jumped by these green balls? Damn. Two more, two more! We got it, we got it! Kill it, kill it! Kill, 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 kill! Let's go! My work! Ow! Pillar one down. After defeating the pillar and claiming our unique Stardust Fragments, we are introduced to unique player exclusive items, such as the Stardust Cell Staff and Stardust Dragon Staff. Our next pillar takes the form of a solar galaxies, worms, and alien spear bears. The scariest thing in this biome is by far 
the worms, who can only be damaged in their tail end, but rush us head-on, making their target incredibly hard to hit. On top of these enemies, the pillars are also subject to sending out projectiles that are breakable by a single attack. Of course, the North Pole makes easy work of these, and before you know it, we melt the solar pillars 20,000 HP, the halfway point for the lunar events. Upon defeating this pillar, however, we'll make an incredible discovery. It says, rend your foes a cinder with a spear of light. It's oh! a spear. Oh, David, is David's legal? Is this They're legal? Okay. It does say spear, but it, like in the wiki, it's not counted as a spear. The Daybreak is the best javelin in the game. It increases our damage from 100 to 150. And that's not including the damage of the explosion of the spear, as the javelin first impales its target before imploding for massive damage. This is truly the best of the best as far as our choice of weapon goes, and no doubt we are significantly more threatening than we already were with the Covenant North Pole. With this new amazing weapon, we continue our battle. The next pillar we encounter is the Nebula Pillar, which is home to teleporting and flying saucers, shooting lasers, and quadrupedal alien assassins. Here the damage of the Daybreak is on full display, reaching numbers never hit before with the North Pole, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss the mindless aiming upwards with the North Pole projectiles. With my new toy, the Nebula Pillar is shaped up to be a walk in the park, and we smited the Nebula Pillar in record time. With just the Vortex Pillar left, home of the flying beetle things, we quickly overwhelmed the pillar, leaving no more standing between us and the Moon Lord, the final boss of the game. This is what we have spent our entire game preparing for, the Eye of Cthulhu, to the Wall of Flesh, to Duke Fishron, and the Moon Lord will truly test our validity as the strongest entities alive. Can Winfred, Wolfgang, and Wendy defeat a celestial god? I doubt it. I'll go middle. I'll go middle eye. I'll go middle eye. I'll go middle eye. No, we don't go middle eye. We just focus. Middle eye only opens for a short time. So, okay, he's gonna do his up beam, 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 beam. Yep. Um, bro, big run. push. Fishron OP, bro. Fish on OP. I know I have all of his attack pattern memorized, so just let me know. And I don't. He's gonna do eye open, eye open, eye open. Middle eye. Middle eye, uh, about to do his thing, about to do his thing. Woo. Why are we in the sky? Why are we in the sky? Middle eye, middle eye, middle eye. Focus middle eye, middle eye, middle eye. Your summons on it, your summons on it. Uh, about to do its beam, 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 beam. Oh, middle eye down, middle eye down. Left eye down, left eye down. Right eye, right, 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 side, right, right, side, right side, right side, right side. Right eye, right eye. Right eye, boys. Then we just hard put hard tank for the core. Four down, go, 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 Get back on last one. Get back on the beams. On the asphalt. Asphalt, asphalt. Show the show. He's on me, he's on me, he's on me. Beam, 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 beam. So low! Finish him off with the horseman's blade! Let's go! All right, guys. See ya. I gotta go. Who's the king? Who's the king? Let's go. As he's dead. As he's We're dead. The best. As he's dead. Hey. Let's go, boys. Not gonna lie, that was really easy. That was really <laughs> easy. <laughs> With the Moon Lord defeated, the fight was self-admittedly really easy. With our pride in tow, we decided that there's only one boss harder than the Moon Lord. A boss that may take hours and days to defeat. A boss worthy of the title "Hardest Boss in the Game." Empress of Light. In nighttime, the Empress is not that threatening, but in daytime, the Empress is enraged, dealing a one-hit KO with all of her attacks, which are on their own, not easy to dodge. In order to summon her, one must wait in the hollow at night for the prismatic lace wings to spawn, which must then be caught with a bug net, then finally released in the daytime and quickly squashed for fight against the true Empress to begin. Where's she at? Oh. Hello. Stupid! Okay. No. Our first fight goes terribly. We die again. And again. And again. And again. And again. No matter our efforts, our efforts are futile. The fight starts with her homing missiles attack, followed by a rush, both of which are avoidable by a simple jump upwards. She then quickly recuperates and does her sun dance, where she stands still and emits rays in a floral pattern. After a second rush, she does a rotating burst of stars which linger and are the reason for a lot of my deaths. Besides that, other attacks include the bullet hell-like attack where she attacks in lines, and another similarly where the lines follow your character. 
Another attack is to where the lines are in a grid. And oh my god, this boss is so crazy. No! It's safe to say that she won't go down without a fight. And the word fight is an understatement for this context. I think that for you to understand how close I was driven to insanity towards this boss, it's best I not tell you, but show you. Okay, that shouldn't be a f that shouldn't be allowed, bro. Why can't she just hug me? Bro, she did the same thing she did earlier. I'm so dead. Uh -huh. No, you trying to put it on me! No! I'll be real with you, it's, a, it's gonna be a bit of luck. That's not fair, bro. Why can't she do that? What do I do there? Punch 20 seconds. No! No! The more we suffer, the more views we get. I don't think that's how it works. If only that's how it works, then we'd get millions, bro. So stupid. Why does she do that much damage, bro? We only do a... Well, we only do a little bit. It's so, like, it's so dumb. I'm gonna get off of Terraria. 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 Eventually, the beating got so bad that we had to call it and just save it for maybe another day. That another day came, and we were fucking driven to defeat this boss. But just like yesterday, Stupid. it reminded us whose court we were playing on. Maybe we were just too weak, and this boss tested us to a difficulty we couldn't match? Or maybe we just needed to believe. I I, I use the North Pole when you're not around, though. Alright, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Scared the crap out of me. Oh, hello. Oh. Dude. I got a lobotomized. My. Second phase. With momentum, my, with momentum my, my, uh, my thing, my mount is really good with momentum, but if, if I, like, if I'm going forward and I, she doesn't attack, I have to quickly go backwards. I can't do that. I'm dead. Mm. I'm not. Cause I'm here. Ah! <laughs> 2K! Let's go! Let's go! We did it! Let's go! Yeah! Let's fucking go! Give me the tail prisma, baby! Give me a tail prisma! Let's go! Give me a tail prisma! After what feels like forever, we finally tasted victory. Even after the Moon Lord, we have proven our existence as the strongest Terrarians in the Terraria universe. Our group, consisting of Wigfrid, Wolfgang, and Wendy, has gone on to challenge beings of primordial and divine powers and come out on top. Thank you all for watching this video. And while I don't ask this often, a like or subscription would be greatly appreciated. I'll also try to respond to any comments you have, be it a suggestion or just an exclamation. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you all in the next Rapid Fire video. My cock is much bigger than yours.